welcome back everybody i'm jade monkey we're back here in rust to talk about that rust console edition for the playstation 4 the xbox one next generations and everything in between and today we're talking about that all-important power surge and reasons why it will change the game forever and also other reasons to get excited for this and to give you a little flavor a little bit of taste of what's coming here if you're not already excited for this you should be uh, it's it's good changes for solos duos small groups and even large groups and it's going to open up so much more gameplay for everybody and i'm just mad excited okay so real fast if you didn't know already because we get the question quite a bit it is on testing branch first we are waiting for it to hit testing branch any day now any week now and it uh, typically sits there for roughly uh, two to three months and it is a separate download just remember that okay so we're going to kind of go through different categories here and then we're going to go over and give you specific examples so hopefully i'm so excited for this hopefully i remember the order of all this this is like take number 52 Okay, so power as a resource. Uh, I want you guys to start thinking about this as not only some like additional items, but think of it as like a metal or a sulfur, but it's a special kind of resource as it has supporting pieces that go with it, i.e. storing power. Uh, you have places or places, items to collect it and then to, uh, I'm sorry, to generate it and then to collect it inside of a battery and there's different ways to use said battery and you have uh, various thresholds of output and uh, runtime, which is something really I think to, uh, you're gonna have to consider if you're gonna use turrets, let's be honest. Uh, things that I think could potentially be in the game, uh, some useful circuits, uh, some things that might even blow your mind here. I mean, just imagine this, imagine coming back from cargo ship and being able to do this from your boat. Yeah. Just and or even trap based implications, right? Like, yeah, it's <laughs> your mind's gonna be blown. And then we have things that uh, will not be in this particular patch, as far as I know, but they could in the future. So we'll kind of hit this before we go over to the larger example set. Uh, and then also we're going to be talking about turrets and how they will drastically change uh, some of the different phases that they could go through as far as do we have them customizable. Uh, but the biggest change is it's going to stop turret spam. Can you still put a lot of turrets out? Absolutely. But the infrastructure has to follow it. And there's very, I think, a, a very fun gameplay that comes along with it as well. Not only that resource. Uh, but also um, how you set this up here. And even if you are like, hey, I'm a little bit worried about this stuff, don't worry, we got you covered. Uh, we've got videos coming through the pipeline here uh, on this channel, so a good reason to subscribe. Uh, we got you covered if you're not an electrician, you just need to get up and running, and then we'll have uh, specific videos and live streams to go over things if you want to understand the circuits as well. So hopefully we got your bases covered all the way across. Okay, so what we're going to go through here, whoops, I fell down again. We're going to go over here before we go over to the other set. Uh, these are things that will not be included in this particular update because these things are considered Rust Plus type things. So you're like, what's Rust Plus? It is literally an application that runs on your phone, iOS or Android, and it interacts with the game in real time. Uh, yeah, mind blown. So things like this, I can trigger from my phone once they're all synced up and I can turn things on and off even when I'm not signed into the game. Yeah, it's going to blow your mind. And then this thing here will send messages to your phone after certain things are triggered. Uh, yeah, so like offline raid alarms can definitely be a thing. Uh, but don't worry, we got you covered for that too. Um, we got different ways to uh, set off alarms and stuff when you're getting raided, even with the standard stuff. Uh, we got different things here. Uh, I forget what this one's called, storage monitor. It actually um, does exactly what it says. It will monitor whatever particular container it's sitting on. The two that I know, I'm sorry, there's three containers it can sit on. The TC, a vending machine, and then a tool. A toolbox, a freaking, um, what is this? A large chest, my goodness. Yeah, I hope we get these uh, uh, update for box sizes. That would be great. So as, as far as I know, these are the ones that will not be included with us until we hear otherwise that we're going to have Rust Plus support. Fingers crossed because it's really going to help you, especially if you get offline a lot. So I know we're all kind of looking at that one. Okay, so these are things that I think will be coming in, and these are screenshots directly from Rust Console Edition. Uh, these are, oddly enough, these are things that exist right now in the Console Edition uh, for the main branch. So if you go to Oil Rig, that's where these little snippets are. We see a little broadcaster here. Um, when you actually do trigger the last crate, it will send in the heavies, but it also sends off a broadcast, which means if you have a pager, it will let anybody who's holding a pager in that frequency, that's why there's like a board up here that has a number, it will actually set that off across the map so you know when people are going to do oil rig or are setting off the last crate. Uh, and here, which I think is interesting, because I think we have a pretty good chance that this may be coming in with our power surge update or electricity. Um, these are the cameras in the computer station. And here's why I say that, because A, we're seeing them inside of the live game now, but they don't necessarily have to put this there unless they plan on using it. And you're like, well, why is that a big deal? Well, check this out. Once you place cameras up and you power them, 
you can click between them. There's even preset cameras, like on the oil rig that we have a picture of, where you can go and check to see who's walking around, who's geared, how many people there are. You can even hear some of the audio. So I think because I'm seeing more of these in the actual world, I think there's a pretty good possibility this will happen. So uh, this doesn't take any power. The only thing that does are the cameras. And if you know the presets for those different locations, like Outpost, Bandit Camp, and stuff like that, Dome, you'll actually have a little sneak peek and get to see things through the camera. So we'll have to see. I, you know, it's always going to be performance-based. So, uh, And again, uh, you can do things like wirelessly communicate. And you can connect this to all kinds of things. And, and just think about this coming in from cargo ship, like I said. Like, how cool is that? Like, you literally can have this and just, you know, walk in. And, you know, that'll save your cheeks for sure, especially cargo. Okay, so like I said, we'll be doing a lot of live streams, answering questions. But we also are going to have, we've shot a bunch of videos. But we're going to have a lot of videos when this does come out. And, um, yeah, all the more reason to subscribe. And just swing by during one of the live streams and ask questions because uh, we love hearing it. And, uh, you know, people have been asking great questions, and we've come up with some really good solutions. Okay, so back to the turrets and how they're going to change drastically. So what you're looking at here is a, an insane amount of turrets, but if you look, each of these are different. They all have different weapons inside, and almost all of the weapons, almost, can be thrown inside of a turret. Here's the deal with this. We don't know for the initial release if these are going to be supported, but we do know at some point they will. So what does that mean? At the very least, we're going to get the turret that comes with the preset weapon inside, and then we'll be able to load it up with ammunition, and we will have to power it. We do know that. But since this has been cooking for roughly an extra year, uh, we could just get this with the customized uh, turret section in here. Actually, we won't be getting this as far as I know. Not yet, anyway. Uh, but we got uh, different types of weapons you can stick in here. Why is that cool? Some of these turrets get awfully devastating with certain types of weapons. Python, you heard it here first, absolute face melter. But here's the other thing. If you've got a weapon that has low durability, you can throw it in here, but you can also customize the weapon, so attachments, and then you can place that inside of the turret to boost its stats and the way it interacts with people uh, and in the game. So, uh, yeah, big deal. And then when we do eventually get the ability to load these up, think about it. It's an extra bonus for people that are taking out turrets. Not only do you get bullets, but you get a weapon. So it really helps, um, it adds more gameplay to the, or I should say gameplay loops to the game. And it really adds, I think, balance to it. Because uh, let's be honest, turrets are super OP. So another thing here, we're going to go over a couple of sample circuits here too. But um, this one looks a little crazy, but this will be something that, this is something that we did cook up on a live stream. Like, uh, let's say you've got a bunch of doors open on your base, right? Um, and this is just a quick example. And we'll definitely have the, um, the schematics and stuff for this and like the easy layout as the video later but um, imagine this you're like hey I've got all these doors open I need to leave quick and how long does it take to close all those doors well this is a only if you're authorized on TC or we call this a poor man smart switch this will only activate if you're off on TC and this opens all the doors and then it closes all the doors in one shot so if a raider comes in and goes deep and they somehow get to this control panel they can't hit the switch hot 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 uh, other things like this where you got door controllers where you can make trap bases yeah, mind blown yet? Almost. We got things like this, and we'll go over more of, of the turret situation here, but uh, electricity will lead to the uh, the water system. The water system also begets the, um, geez, I just choked out, the T's, um, and the different, uh, like the farming 2.0, like the cloning and stuff. So, like, look at this. This will happen for our version for power surge. You can actually start up a furnace. But then when we do get the water system, we can do things like turn off the furnace and soak it. Think about it, you put it on a timer and an activation switch so people are like, oh, they're home. And then not to burn all your wood, you let it um, burn out after, like, you let your timer run for five minutes or something, right? Hot. Uh, we do think we'll be getting the heater and our particular version for power surge, or also known as electricity. Um, so it'll make things much easier in the snow biome to actually survive. Yeah, so you know, hang on for that. You know what I mean? It's going to be hot. Uh, we got things over here, and this just shows you power as a resource and then also setting up the turrets. Like, look at this. And here's, I think, the biggest change. Like, not only all this infrastructure here, but, like, look, the runtime we have on this on a fully charged battery is only eight hours. So, like, you know, some people work and go to school, so you're like, how am I going to set this up? And this is just one turret. So you need smart ways to activate the turret. You need ways to collect this power. You need to be watching your power uh, usage. You need to make sure you've got extra backups, um, you know, hide the different uh, footprints you have for generating power. It's a big deal. So, like, here's another example. 
And don't worry about all this stuff. If it's too crazy, like I said, I'm going to have uh, video examples to show everybody uh, if you just need something to copy too. But like, look at this. These are three turret ports with automatic doors, but the turrets power on as well. And if you look here, we've got a fully charged, almost fully charged medium battery. And when you turn this on, our power consumption is 41 units of power. And the maximum output for the medium battery is 50. And so here, you can see we are operating three uh, turret ports that have fully functional doors. Yeah, so you start to see, you're like, okay, so now my runtime's only three hours? Yeah, exactly. So having the ability to turn certain turret ports on and off will save your battery consumption and give you more runtime. Things to think about. And I know a lot of people are like, hey, I use more than three batteries now. Well, you can definitely scale up, but you're also going to have to plan for it. This is a nine turrets always on and a 12-hour battery backup for Zergs or large groups. But look at this infrastructure, right? Is your face melted yet? A little bit? <laughs> It's totally doable, but like this kind of shows you like, yes, you can go big, but you have to plan for it. So you have to have probably an electrician guy that does that. So, you know, things to, to look out for. And again, we'll have solutions for these two. Uh, so don't fret. And we'll also have explanations for the people that really want to get into the weeds because it's super hot. And yes, you can fit these into a, its own battery closet. And yes, you will be protecting power items just like you protect your tool cupboard. But I think uh, one of the more uh, headier things you can do with this are trap bases. And let me see if I got this reset here. So it can be pretty easy where you've got uh, like a door open here and you've got a sensor that detects somebody when they come in. Obviously, we'd hide the wires here. Um, but if you kind of look and you're like, oh, is this is this open? And you, you come in here and then this heartbeat sensor detects you, closes, closes this door, opens this, and then you have three uh, shotgun traps that absolutely will blow you away. And then you just boom, boom, collect. So there's so many different uses for this. I want people to get so excited for this, especially if you're going to be making trap bases. But like a lot of people look at the turret stuff, and it does look a little intimidating at first. But I'm telling you, it's so worth it. Uh, once this is kind of settled in, you get a little bit familiar with it, you'll be like, man, this is what we should have had in the very beginning. And I'll be like, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes, that's Power Surge and why it's going to change the game forever. And I think it's really good for solos and small groups and uh, for all players. And it's going to add so much more gameplay. And uh, I'm just, I'm really excited for it. Can't wait for it to hit the PTB. So if you're looking for a good water base or a good boat base, we've got the bilge water base is specifically designed for solos and duos. You can enter and leave the base completely underwater. It's got a boat port and it's cargo ship ready. And we'll throw it up on the end screen now. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Love you. Bye.